This is Camnet News. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Sharon Kalimbola. The story is on our desk tonight. The Hatembo siblings accuse Edith Nawakwi of forcing them into hiding. Lusaka District Commissioner urges members of the public to upscale the fight against the COVID-19. PF Manifesto must highlight the gains made, not promises, charges a development activist. And in international news, Chad holds funeral for President Idris Deby. In sports news, Lusaka Dynamos takes over the Absa Cup. Join me shortly for the details. Has been described as a highly politically charged year. This is because every five years the country goes to the polls, and that five years elapses with only a few months remaining down to the ballot. The battlefield to appear on the ballot is becoming fertile. A lot of people are expressing interest of appearing on the ballot. In all this, our interest is to put the duty bearers, the leaders, and those aspiring to task by asking the relevant questions. If you're an aspiring candidate, be it councillor, mayor or member of parliament, get in touch with us to get yourself on the verdict. We go beyond speculation in dealing with policy and governance issues. The right questions are asked to help you make a verdict. For more details, you can call us on 0962 96 5883 0979 753010 or email us info at camnetvafrica.com. Terms and conditions apply. Join us on Camne TV every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 17:45 hours on a new program dubbed The Verdict. Remember that Kamna TV is not just another channel. Once again, thank you for joining us. Residents of Lusaka's garden house area are living in fear of not having water in the area due to broken pipes damaged during the construction taking place in the area. The residents have told Kamna News that the project is being implemented in the area by government through the Chinese contractor of setting up a sewer system in the area has left several water pipes broken thereby interrupting water supply to households. The residents are since calling on the relevant authorities to quickly rush to the area and see how best the water pipes can be maintained. Details in this. In heavy downpours in the 2020 to 2021 rain season, Kanyama and Garden House are one such area that saw floodings leading to evacuation of some residents by the government. While floodings saw fecal matter in pitra trees mixed with rainwater, the residents cried foul and called on government to intervene before cholera greeted them. And in addressing the challenges of pitra tree mixing with water when it rains heavily, government is now installing proper sewer system in the area to ensure the use of pitra trees is eliminated. This has however birthed its own challenges as water pipes are now being broken down in the process causing flooding and contamination to drinking water. Sometimes <laughs> Some residents have also accused the contractor of negligence when digging the ground for the installation of sewer pipes, saying if the contractor is considerable enough, water pipes can be protected from damage. It's Ricky. Uh, there is this uh, project which is uh, taking place, I think, around the, I think the whole of this Kanyama. I think I see there is Chinese which are working here and there. Yeah, so are the ones who are, as they were doing their job here. Yeah, so as they were doing their job, so are the ones who left these uh, leakages of water. The low pressure of water, as you can see, whenever there is a, a, a whenever there is a leakage, definitely even the pressure becomes a bit low. Uh, I think uh, water, at water trust, Kajama Water Trust, they need to come in. Uh, they just need to come and uh, repair this pipe. I think that's what is needed to, to be done. 
We appreciate the effort that whoever is doing in bringing up these drainages in the Kanyama area, but this has brought a mess as we are drinking water which is contaminated and water when water is being drawn, it is yellow in the containers and therefore we are asking the would be people responsible to take care of this so that both the people who are making the drainages and the residents of Kanyama can be happy about when the whole process is complete. One thing that is certain in this area is that water pipes are close to the surface and any heavy duty car passing through this area passes on top of the water pipes. Urgent attention is needed to ensure that the pipes are well placed in the ground before the situation worsens causing serious water challenges in this area. Prudence Chota reporting for Kamne TV News. A development activist, Lewis Mwape, has chanced to the strength of the Patriotic Front PF Manifesto be in the performance done in the past 10 years and not in words. Speaking to Kamnet TV in an exclusive interview, Mr. Mwape stressed that government under the PF administration has a lot to prove to the Zambian people, apart from words found in the Apartheid Manifesto document. Meanwhile, Patriotic Front Lusaka District Youth Information and Publicity Secretary Jonas Chisamba has told Comnet TV that all those condemning the PF manifesto alleging that it is an act of desperation designed to mislead naive voters already considering defeat. Miriam Kaimba filed this report. As the country gets near to the general elections, political parties continue to unveil their party manifestos which disclose what they will do for the country when voted into office. Electoral manifestos play a crucial role in vision of party democracy and analysis of party competition. It also provides a compodium of valid party positions. And for parties that get into government in the subsequent election, voters will not only judge parties according to their policy programs for the next term in office, but also retrospectively focus on the government's performance and scrutinize if the parties have kept their promises. Development activist Lewis Mwabe says the Patriotic Front Manifesto must be in the performance done in the past 10 years. It has been in government and not words. The strength of the PF Manifesto is not in the words that they have used. The strength of the PF Manifesto should be in the, in the performance in the past 10 years. So I think they have a lot of things to prove apart from just uh, talking about uh, what they have talked about in the, in, the, uh, in the manifesto. I think they have a lot of things to prove. Uh, for example, if you talk about uh, uh, empowering citizens, um, un uniting the country, I think it will, it will be good for the Zambian people to look back on the track record on how the uh, Patriotic Front as a, as, a, as a party in power, how has it performed in ensuring that we as a country, we are united, there is no tribalism, uh, there is no racism, there is no um, uh, discrimination in the distribution of resources. So I think uh, there is a lot more to do with the text versus the practice. So the PF, I think, must focus more on justifying on what they have done. Meanwhile, PF Lusaka District Youth Information and Publicity Secretary Jonas Chisamba is very confident that the Zambian people will elect the PF back in office after the 12th August general elections because of the massive development it has brought to the country in the past 10 years. Coming up with the manifesto is because we believe and uh, uh, know that the Zambian people, what they want, they want a tested leadership. They want to hear from the leadership and they want to have the roadmap for that leadership. And those who are, who are from corporate worlds who are saying that it's a panic, it's just, they are just UPND cadres because they have been promised jobs, they have been promised a lot of things. So now they have seen that it's not going to be there because the Zambian people are, we are confident that Zambian people are giving back the mandate to His Excellency Dr. Edgar Chagarung and the PF leadership. All in all, the Zambian citizen remain with one hope to have a government that will deliver and save its people diligently. Miriam Kemba, reporting for Kamne TV News. 
The Hartembo siblings have released a four minutes video in which they are accusing the Forum for Democracy and Development, FDD President Edith Nawakwi, of forcing them into hiding. In a video, both siblings have denied claims that they have been abducted by anyone but forced into hiding due to threats received. Feluna Hartembo has lamented that she has been away from home for the past three months for fear of being executed. She is now calling on women organizations as well as other human rights organizations to assure their safety before they can reveal their whereabouts. Meanwhile, Edith Nawakwi has denied, has laughed at the Hatembo siblings' claims, stating that she has some of her family members under the care, wondering why she would actually threaten the Hatembo siblings. Details in this. The issue surrounding the Hatembo's disappearance is beginning to get shape with a new video of the two siblings surfacing Saturday morning. For the past one month, police have been investigating their disappearance, with many people being called on the questionable table by the police over the matter. While others have been arrested and released in connection with the matter, the recent being the wife to Chief Mukoni who spent at least three nights in police custody. However, Feluna and Melton Hartembo have denied any sort of abduction, claiming they are hiding for fear of losing their lives. In a video statement, they claim Foreign for Democracy and Development FDD leader Edith Nawakwi has threatened their lives if they refuse to comply with a demand in the land saga involving United Party for National Development leader Haraine Hijilema. Initially, the two siblings had sued Mr. Hijilema over a piece of land in Kalomo, a matter that did not see the day of light. Since then, the lives of the Hatembo siblings have never been the same. We have been running away in the bush, sleeping in the bush, and people keep saying that uh, we are abducted, which is not true. We are not abducted. They are busy arresting innocent people over something that is not true. It is Nawakwi who gave us the promises of buying us vehicles, houses, and other uh, things. If we were to appeal this case against Hagainde Echilema in Court of Appeal. We want to tell the nation that we have rejected the offers that Ms. Nawaki gave us. And Feluna Hatembo is calling on the human rights to secure their safety before they can review where they are hiding. I've come again, people of Zambia. I am crying. Nawaki has troubled me. Nawaki is threatening to kill us if we go through the case. I'm being troubled. I've got a child who is disabled. He can't do anything on his own. I have to aid him on anything he's doing. I'm busy running up and down with a disabled child. Please, my fellow women, can you sit Nawakwi down? Talk to her. Why is she doing this to me? We are running away from our houses. No one is keeping us, incarcerating people who are not even involved in this issue. Please, let's not politicize this issue. It's Nawaku who is troubling us. She promised to kill us. Nawaku, please, can you leave us alone? But when contacted for a comment, Foreign for Democracy and Development leader Edith Nawaku has denied the claim. Right now, I'm with some of their children. They are distraught. They don't know where they are. And why are they not where they are? Why don't they report to the police so that the police can protect them? This country, the only people who can protect human beings is police. I mean, it's, it's like if in you as journalists you're being spun around by the crookedness of the other Indians. If, if you sit and, uh, and, uh, and uh, go through the, the motion, uh, uh, can, can you exercise your mind to that? Is, is it normal for a mother with a sick child to be absent for four months? For now, we can only sit and observe as the matter unfolds. Prudence Chota. Reporting for Kamna TV News. Indeed, we will continue to monitor this story as it unfolds. In other news, United Party for National Development, UPND chairperson in charge of local government, Newton Samakai, has expressed concern over the illegal buildings being erected on the railway lines in Lusaka's Libala area. Mr. Samakai, who is also Mwinilunga Member of Parliament, says such illegalities must not be entertained, as he described it as anarchy and lawlessness that may get worse if left unchecked. Mr. Samakai has his question who the owners of the land, who the owners rather of the structures are, and who authorized the buildings. He has also challenged the Lusaka City Council to avail the full details of who authorized the illegalities.
there are indeed people that are building on the line, the council should go there and uh, stop them. You know, we can't go on with the illegality. That is, that is anarchy. If it is the council that gave those people those uh, plots, they must be uh, stopped and be given plots everywhere. I mean, anywhere else. And, and if indeed it's the council that gave them those plots, uh, they must be compensated. Those people must be compensated and given plots uh, uh, elsewhere so that uh, they can uh, 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 build their, their, their the structures there. But if those um, uh, uh, plots were given by cadres, the council should stop those people, demolish those uh, uh, structures, and there should be no compensation to anyone because that is anarchy. You can't have people, you know, cadres from the ruling party giving out the uh, plots uh, anyhow when the responsibility to do that is, is for the council. I think the minister must uh, must rise to the occasion and uh, and take charge of what is happening in these uh, in these councils. We can't have this kind of uh, uh, anarchy uh, going around in all the in all the councils. This must be stopped. Tourism and Arts Minister Ronald Chitotela has called on Christians across the country to continue praying for the country as it goes to the elections this August. Speaking during a church service at State Lodge Main Seventh-day Adventist in Lusaka Saturday, Mr. Chitotela says no tribe or ethnic grouping should come in between the peace and unity of the country. He says real followers should preach love and pray without ceasing because the election period is critical for the country. And Mr. Chitotelao has also made a donation of 25,000 kwacha towards the church building project, says everyone should make sure that they are united. Mr. Chitotelao also says that the church should be the conveyor belt of fostering peace and unity in the nation, as opposed to perpetrating hatred. And SDA Woodlands Conference Executive Secretary Johnny Namako says the church should be in the salt of the world by ensuring love, peace and unity. You're watching Cabinet News just now. We take our first set of commercials. Join me shortly for more interesting stories. Don't go away. From time immemorial, we have had different types of lighting options. From those that can burn down our investments in minutes to those that dig holes in our pockets due to constant replacement and huge consumption of our Zesco units. Savenda Electric introduces the new and advanced electric bulb with cutting edge technology of LED that has low power consumption, gives out bright white light and lasts up to 25,000 hours. Savenda Electric manufactures all types of LED light like plastic LED fluorescent tubes, down lights, ceiling lights, outdoor fittings, and solar street lights made to customer specifications. Let's live on the bright side of life by choosing the wide range of Savenda electric lighting solutions that are available in all leading stores and supermarkets countrywide. For orders, call 0962-642-490 or email jnbanda at savenda.com or pchabula at savenda.com. Every day for me means hard work, going to sell my goods at the local market. To get more customers, I have my secret. Oracle Pure Glycerin. It's soft, smooth, and keeps my skin perfect. <laughs> and my customers know it. Thank you, Oracle, for my perfect skin. It's your friends. I insist. Your drama. Do you think you can talk about my dad like that? You ain't trying. And intrigue. Are you out for good or what? Hmm? What do you want? Dear, you say that to me, eh? Your heroes. It's your moment with your stories. Made at home for your home. Cause great stories start on DSTV. Hello, I'm 
Deborah Lukalu all the way from South Africa. You are watching Kamina Channel, not just another channel. God bless you. Stay we tuned. Justify. This is Kamnet News. Thank you so much for staying on. Lusaka District Commissioner David Silobanji has charged that the COVID-19 pandemic is still tormenting populations globally, urging members of the public not to relent in the fight. Speaking when he launched the Lusaka District COVID-19 vaccination program, Mr. Silobanji notes that while the Ministry of Health stands ready to fight the third wave of the pandemic, there is need to collectively ensure that the provisions of routine essential health services focusing on communicable diseases, non-communicable diseases, and issues associated with reproductive maternal, neonatal, child, adolescent health, and nutrition are enhanced. Meanwhile, Mr. Silobanja says the Lusaka District Administration, through the Office of the Director of Public Health, will also continue through strengthening preparedness, prevention, surveillance, disease intelligence, and response. The District Commissioner has since urged all those wishing to take the vaccine to do so, saying that people should also ensure that they observe the health guidelines put in place, such as social distancing, masking up, and washing of hands. The COVID-19 pandemic is still tormenting our population globally, but we will not relent on the fight. We are making good progress, and the numbers of cases in Zambia continues to reduce we, however, remain cautious of the continued threat and this government effort to continually provide public health security. Government under the leadership of His, His Excellency Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu recognize the importance of a health population in the facilitation of social and economic development. Zambia just like most countries, has been ravaged by the COVID-19 pandemic. But it's clear that both the nation and the sub-nations levels have shown resilience in coordinating and implementing health services. On behalf of His Excellency Dr. Edgar Chagwarungu, I would like to take this opportunity to express sincere appreciation for the hard work and personal, and personal sacrifice being ex exhibited by the health personnel, frontliners, and indeed to you all partners supporting the health sector during these critical and hard times. Thank you very much. Health Minister Jonas Chanda says 3,537 people have been vaccinated against COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. The Health Minister in a statement says the cumulative number of those vaccinated now stands at 12,543, of which 32% are health care workers. Dr. Chanda, however, says concerns surrounding the AstraZeneca and Johnson's and Johnson's about clothing events have been reviewed in the United States, Europe and other countries in health Experts have agreed that the benefits vast uh, outweigh any risk. The minister has since encouraged the mobile populations, including public service vehicle drivers, marketeers, cross-border traders, and others in congregate settings such as security camps, schools, and colleges to voluntarily get the vaccine as they are more exposed to the coronavirus. And Dr. Janda says the country has, in the last 24 hours, recorded 66 new COVID-19 cases with zero deaths. He has since encouraged the public to continue adhering to the five golden rules to prevent the further spread of the COVID-19 in the country. In other news, the Lusaka-based mental health advocate Duncan Koma has called on government to introduce more mental health facilities, both in schools 
and in rural areas. Ms. Ankoma told Kamne TV in an exclusive interview that the increase of people committing suicide, especially in schools, is turning into a national concern that needs urgent intervention. In this regard, Mr. Nkoma says there is need to introduce mental health subjects in schools that will help learners understand what they might be going through. He adds that the rural areas is one of the most concerned places where mental health awareness and facilities need to be built because most people in villages have challenges accessing such facilities. Mr. Nkoma has also advised stakeholders to help government in coming up with such facilities. Cases of suicide um, in the country. It's, it's something that is so much concerned. As a mental health advocate, um, looking at uh, the high number of cases of suicide, it is it is it is worrying to me. Looking at uh, uh, what happened to last week, a student at Eden University committed suicide, and I appeal to the government and stakeholders to to take mental health so serious, to consider um, introducing mental health. Uh, facilities in different mental health uh, centers in the country, even in rural areas, because mental health affects everyone. Everyone struggles with mental health. It's, it's not just in towns of Osaka. Everyone goes through a mental health crisis. So it's important that the government should look upon it and introduce mental health screening and also to educate people on mental health. There are people that struggle with mental health, but they don't know where to go to. They don't even know what they are, what they, what is wrong with them because they have no idea about mental health. And also, I appeal to the government to educate people to also introduce mental health uh, as a subject in schools. In that way, we are going to have um, reduced cases of suicide because suicide is, a, is as a result of a mental illness. The Drug Enforcement Commission, DEC, has noted with concern the massive increase of young people involved in drug dealings. DEC Public Relations Officer Matthew Skamanga says the commission is currently facing challenges because they are not getting the much-needed support from communities. When it comes to dealing with such issues, some members of the community protect drug dealers. Mr. Kamanga says the commission has encountered cases where officers have been harassed or beaten by members of the community because they are trying to arrest the drug dealers. He has since appealed to members of the community to help curb drug abuse by reporting cases of drug-related activities. The Drug Enforcement Commission, we want to acknowledge that uh, the problem of drug abuse is quite high uh, in the country. And this is happening across the country, actually, not only in Lusaka, but also in other provinces. Um, and this is owing to many factors, one of which uh, can be blamed uh, probably on the parents who are not really uh, taking care of the children to make sure that they are taught in the way that uh, they should go in accordance with the Bible, uh, the instructions of the Bible, and uh, many other factors which include peer pressure and, uh, and, and many other reasons. But one challenge that we have as a commission is that we are not getting the support that we need from the communities out there. You find that the community, instead of them, assisting the officers in combating this problem. We are having a problem where they are joining in with the drug dealers and they are attacking the officers. And so in the recent incidents, we had an officer injured, or uh, a few officers injured here and there, which is very unfortunate. What we need to do is to come together, to put our heads together and to be able to take the approach of awareness. You're still watching Kamni News. We take another break. Join me shortly for international and sports news. In this fast-paced era of industrial boom and population growth, there is need to invest in smart ways of managing electricity and water consumption and reducing utility billing costs associated with the postpaid billing system. At Savenda Electronics, we manufacture right here in Zambia different types of high-quality smart electricity and water meters to customer specifications. Savenda Electronics water and electricity meters help you monitor your usage and gives notifications such as low units, tampering, low battery, and many other features. These easy-to-use meters makes it easier to buy units even in these COVID times and top up just from the comfort of your space.
Favorable contract terms are available to both electricity and water utilities. For more details, get in touch with us on the following numbers 0956 580 349 or 0977 498 318. Savenda Electronics, the real deal. Making GoTV payments is easier than you think. But first, you have to log in. First of all, open the GoTV app. Then select your country. Fill in your surname or cell phone number and then your IUC number. That's it. You can log in. Welcome to your home page. Now click on Pay Now. Select Make a Payment. Next, you will be asked how much you wish to pay. You can do this by clicking on the space next to the Quacha sign and entering the desired amount. All the details of your payment, including account details and amount you are paying, will appear. Make sure everything is in order. Now click on the Ting button under Choose Payment option. When the Ting window pops up, click on OK and then Pay Now. Now select Preferred Card Payment or Mobile Money option. When the Make a Payment window opens, click on the pink Pay Now button. Now, you simply authorize the payment by clicking on Send Prompt, which will send a prompt to your mobile number. Once you've received the prompt on your phone, simply enter the unique PIN and you are done. Go TV. Love it. Welcome back. You're still watching Cabinet News. We now look at international stories. Chad's longtime president, Idris Deby, has been put to rest. He ruled for 30 years and was a close ally of France. Deby died from injuries he sustained on the battlefield last week. His son, Mohammed Idris Deby, is now in power and will lead the Transitional Military Council for the next 18 months. The opposition has described the succession as a military call. Meanwhile, Al Jazeera also reports that a new malaria vaccine is being held as a game changer in the fight to eliminate the disease in Senegal. The Export Institute vaccine has proved 77% effective at preventing infection and is now entering larger human trials to rule out any side effects. Malaria kills half a million people every year, many of them are children. With these shots, Chad's army and people said farewell to their former leader, Idris Deby. Four days after the announcement of his death, a funeral service for the president of three decades was held in the capital's largest public square, Place de la Nation. It was attended by heads of neighboring countries, senior regional officials, and Deby's family. The whole country and its people can feel my pain as a wife who has lost her husband in difficult times. We've lost a countryman and the head of our family. Idris Deby to me was the exemplary husband, guiding father and counsellor. All these characters in one man whom we have lost. Idris Deby died from injuries he sustained fighting the rebel Front for Change and Concord group in the northern region of Kanem. Coming to power in 1990, after overthrowing his predecessor, Hussein Habre, his tenure was filled with rebellions as well as coup attempts. After a military council took over following Deby's death, his son, a military officer, 37-year-old Mohammed Deby, is now head of state. The country's constitution, parliament and government have all been dissolved, and a charter put out to guide the country for the next 18 months. 
Idris Deby's death closes a chapter in Chad's history that lasted for more than 30 years. But the one that's opening now is presenting challenges. Many opposition leaders, as well as other groups, have rejected having Deby's son as their new leader. As the military council calls for dialogue, others are calling for labor strike. All this as Chad faces threats internally and externally. The rebel group has declared it will continue fighting and take over the capital in Jamena. Chad is also part of the G5 Sahel countries, involved in counterterrorism operations in Lake Chad and along the border with Mali, Niger and Nigeria. Before the funeral, Chad's strongest ally, France's President Emmanuel Macron, met the military council and the G5 country leaders to discuss security. France will not let anybody question or threaten today or tomorrow Chinese stability and territorial integrity. France will be here to ensure that the promise which was made will be realized for all patriots. Stability, inclusiveness, dialogue and democratic transition, this is what we want. We are by your side. Many of Debbie's supporters who came for his funeral could not hide their grief. We should be strong and not let this country go to waste. We're all mourning, but we should not forget that he died for this country, so we should unite and try to make this country move forward. We need to be united for the country's stability, for the country's security, and for its territorial integrity. Not everyone is happy, the military is in charge, but they're open to dialogue, so we should take that as the first step. Debbie is being buried next to his father's grave in the eastern town of Mjeras. And to the world, he was one of Africa's longest serving leaders who died in conflict. To most of the opposition, he was a ruthless leader who denied them a change in governance. And to others in Chad, he will be remembered as the man who led the country during difficult times. It's in this lab, a hundred kilometers away from Burkina Faso's capital, Ouagadougou, deep in the Sahel region, that a groundbreaking discovery was made. Here, blood samples were analyzed from 450 children given an experimental vaccine against malaria developed by scientists from Oxford University's Jenner Institute. Scientists say the results of their year-long study are extraordinary. I have been part in other studies like this, but never have I seen such good results. All the mothers that are taking part in this study say their children are feeling great. It's an extraordinary moment to see that a vaccine against malaria actually works. Malaria kills almost half a million people a year globally, mostly children living in Africa. There's been efforts to try to slow the spread of malaria by distributing mosquito nets and repellents. But during the rainy season, malaria thrives. And last year, more people died of it than COVID-19. And so an effective vaccine would save and protect not millions of people, but billions of people living in tropical climates exposed to mosquitoes that carry the deadly parasite. Larger trials on nearly 5,000 children will now be carried out in four African countries. But the Jenner Institute, which was behind the AstraZeneca COVID vaccine, is already seeking World Health Organization approval for the malaria vaccine. The World Health Organization wanted a 75% effective vaccine. This is the first time we've gone just, uh, anyone's gone just above that level with 77%. Really importantly, it can be manufactured at, last, at large scale. And we're hearing from the Serum Institute of India today that they'll be able to produce 200 million doses or more. Making the vaccine affordable for those who need it most will be the next challenge. Still, for this small clinic research center in Burkina Faso, where there have been decades of efforts against malaria, this experimental vaccine is a breakthrough not just for science, but for humanity. That's it for international news. We now take our attention to sports news. Lusaka Dynamos has beaten Zesco United on post-match penalties to claim the 2020-2021 Absa Cup at Lusaka's Woodland Stadium. This is the first time Lusaka Dynamos is winning the Absa Cup. Lusaka Dynamos captain and goalkeeper Mongandala converted the winning penalty as the elite won 3-1 on penalties. Last year, the cup tournament was cancelled due to the COVID-19, with Zesco being the defending champions, having won the cup for at least six times. 
congratulations to Lusaka Dynamos there. That note ends our news tonight, but before we go to the headlines, once again. The Hatembo siblings accuse Edith Nawakwe of forcing them into hiding. Lusaka District Commissioner urges members of the public to upscale the fight against COVID-19. PF Manifesto must highlight the gains made, note promises, charges, a development activist. And in international news, Chad holds funeral for President Idris Deby. In sports news, Lusaka Dynamos takes over the Absa Cup. We now look at the cabinet verse for the day, and it's coming from 1st John 2, verse 2, chapter 2, verse 15 to 16, and it reads, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. Well, that's all we had for you on the desk tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Sharon Kalimbola. Good night.